John Keane, you've done so much thinking about democracy and you've got a book coming out shortly, When Trees Fall, Monkeys Scatter. Yes. What's that about? Uh, the starting point is that we've got a China that's on the rise. Everybody agrees. It's becoming a big global power. And the question for me is what kind of polity, what kind of regime, what kind of China are we talking about? Well, the standard answer is that it's a one-party dictatorship. It's a one-party authoritarian system. What I try to do in this book, using an old Chinese proverb, is to appeal to readers uh, to think again, to think twice about China, because China is many things. It has a kaleidoscopic quality to it. And one of the strong and striking features when you look down inside, do an anatomy of China, is the, the party, the ruling party, at all levels, has been striving for three decades or so to become a learning party. They try to govern, despite all of the dysfunctions and the corruption and so on, they try to govern to win the loyalty of the population because they know 7% of the Chinese population are members of the party. So if the tree falls... If the tree of the party falls, then the monkeys will certainly scatter. It would affect the lives not only of that 90 million Chinese citizens who are members of the party, but of course the whole political and economic order, and of course the whole region in which Australia is entangled. So, so we in Australia are trying to find a way into China. How should we look at that relationship? Uh, with open eyes, uh, with an open mind, uh, with uh, paying careful attention to the many faces of China. Yes, China has its black jails and there are disappearances and there's martial law. Well, we've got some crown executives stuck in China at the moment. Yes, and um, but it's also uh, it's also a system in which parts of the system operate according to rule of law. That's true for the way the Chinese behave in the WTO and the way they'll behave in this new bank, the AIIB, uh, in which Australia is a partner. And it is a system where, uh, for example, the party uses opinion polls to govern. It is a system in which more than a million elections have happened at the village level. Uh, it is a system in which there's constant talk of democracy in the people. And if you look at the reliable opinion polls, somewhere between 80, 80 and 90 percent of Chinese people say they live in a democracy. All of that needs to be understood if we're to do business with China, if we're to uh, be tourists, if we're to be involved in negotiations at university level and so on. All of this, um, I mean, a kind of wisdom you know, outside of China needs to be developed with open eyes and with you know, a clearer head about uh, the nature of China. One Belt, One Road is quite expansionist for China. Uh, at the other end of it, we've got India with its democracy. Do you think India's growth uh, based on democracy, its growth and innovation will be more successful than the Chinese model? Well, time is going to tell. And uh, as far as the Silk Road, Belt Road initiative is concerned, um, one thing I think is striking from Chinese history and contemporary developments is that um, something like the return in 21st century form of the tributary empire is going on. And a tributary empire is not an empire that's ruled by a uh, military, military fist. It's done through buying things, huge infrastructure projects, 40% of uh, foreign investment is now com comes out of China. Um, so buying things and developing sort of tributary relations is the Chinese way of extending power outside of um, the borders of China. India is um, a plural constitutional democracy. Uh, it has a lot of decadent features, huge gap between rich and poor, a lot of corruption of the political class symptoms of many democracies. And it remains to be seen whether uh, that tension between India and China will grow. Uh, I think it's an open question, uh, but I think that one shouldn't underestimate this China, which far from being a one-party 
authoritarian dictatorship is a polity that has certain democratic qualities to it, and that explains the patterns of loyalty. And there's one last thing to say. If China were to collapse, it would be a catastrophe, not only for the Chinese population, but for the region, including Australia. John King, great to talk. Thank you.